All right, so uh, I, I basically I want my students to do a little bit of practice, kind of some mundane practice that we always need our students to do, maybe two or three problems. I want students to do the work uh, in GeoGebra because I am still teaching remotely, and I want to be able to follow along all the students in almost real time uh, using the new GeoGebra Classroom feature. Uh, so how do we get the problems into uh, a GeoGebra activity? So this is how we do it. So uh, I'm in my GeoGebra right here, and I've got my whiteboard templates that I love. So I'm going to choose one of these, and right now I'm just going to use a blank whiteboard. So I'm going to make a copy of that activity. And here we go. We're going to name this Ratio Practice uh, Worksheet. All right, and I'm going to call this demo so I know that this is not for real. All right, and then so what I, I'm going to do, I'm going to insert into each of these canvases the problem that I want students to work on. The reason I need to put it here is if I insert the problem here, uh, basically I'm, I want to grab a screenshot, let's say. Um, I can't insert the image unless it's actually an image on out there on the internet. So I'm not really going to use this portion to indicate what the problem is. I'm going to insert the problem itself in the, the canvas itself. So here's my sample worksheet. And let's say I want to do this first problem. So I'm going to do a screenshot of that problem. I'll do the screenshot of this problem. And then I'll do a screenshot of this problem. So you'll, you'll notice those three screenshots are showing up over here on my dashboard. Uh, I mean on my desktop. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to name each of those screenshots. Let's Let's name this first one 001, I'll name the second one 002, and I'll name the third one 003, and that's going to so that it shows up at the top of my list when I, I'm ready for it. So I'm going to go back into my GeoGebra, and remember this is the copy of the worksheet that I created. I don't need uh, it to say insert problem here, so I might as well just kind of delete that part, but I do like the idea of it being labeled as problem one. So uh, unfortunately, look at that, I just learned something. I, you can't have it blank. So there it is, problem one. Now, I wanna insert the problem into this canvas. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna click the pencil and then I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna edit this applet. And I'm gonna edit it by adding the image. So I'm gonna click the image button, choose file. There is problem one at the top and I'm gonna click OK. And there you go, there is the problem. Now, uh, you'll notice these two points down here. Right now, I can drag this around, but the problem itself is really um, covering most of the canvas. So um, those two points indicate where uh, the boundaries of the problem. And I could grab a point and I can rotate it and scale it and all that sort of stuff. So it keeps the aspect ratio, but I'm just gonna move it to wherever I want, you know, resize it. Now if I don't want students to um, resize this image, all I have to do is right click on each of these points and that's going to hide the points. All right, and, and in which case now the students can move the image but they will not be able to resize it. At this point I'm just going to leave it alone uh, just so that you can see what it looks like. I'm going to click done and then I'll click done again. And look at that. There is the um, problem one with inserted problem, uh, the canvas, the first canvas with the inserted problem one. I'm gonna do the same thing for problem two. So I'm going to uh, click the little pencil to edit the, the uh, canvas. I'm gonna click edit applet. And here is the actual applet. So I'm gonna use the existing image tool to insert problem two. I'm going to click on that point and, and use my arrow key to resize as needed. Technically, I don't really need to because students can use their scroll on their, um, or they can use the zoom buttons. They can use the scroll on their mouse or they can use the zoom keys up here to resize it themselves. But I'm going to do that and I'm, then I'm going to click done and then I'm going to click done again. And there we have problem one. Now we have problem two, and then let's do it one last time. So remember problem, the way you edit your problem is 
you're going to edit the canvas by clicking the pencil. You're going to scroll down to edit the applet. And that's where you're going to insert your image. Image 3, click open. And then you've got your resulting image, but you can click on any of these two points to resize it. And then you can move it around and click done. And then click done again. And then I can hit save and close. And now it's going to think. And now that it's saved, I can go to my profile. And there is the problems that I want my students to practice. They have this beautiful canvas that they can write directly on. Uh, that's the beauty of GeoGebra. And then um, all I need to do at this point is I need to just create the class. Uh, way up in the upper right hand corner, I'm just going to create that class. Uh, and then uh, way over here, way in the upper right hand corner, I don't know why my face is suddenly popping up. <laughs> <That's> awesome. <laughs> uh, click the create the class. So now uh, this is where the students will then have access to it and they can write on it. All their names start to show up. I share the link and I get that point. So that part is, is beautiful. Um, the cool thing here that I wanted us to learn is that you can Oopsies, that's not the one I wanted. The original activity, not the class, but the original. That's why I name it, because I don't always pay attention to the label activity and class, so I literally name it class. It kind of helps me. Um, so in the activity worksheet, all you have to do, remember, is you're going to edit that activity. Once you've made a copy of your template, click your pencil, go down here to edit. And that is where you use the image tool to insert your image. And at that point, uh, that is how you use GeoGebra to just help your students do that mundane task of practicing a couple of problems in that remote learning situation where you as the teacher can take advantage of the GeoGebra classroom, the dashboard where you're able to see all of the student working at the same 